thanks for joining us, Rodri. I know you've been working nights this week. How is it going for you out on the front line at the um, Nightingale Hospital? Uh, yeah, uh, it's going all right. Um, we had our first discharges this week, uh, which was which was really special. Um, yeah, I'd say I'm coping pretty well, all things considered. Yeah. So what, what's your job there? You're a vascular scientist, right? What's your job entail there? Uh, so normally I'm working as a vascular scientist um, at the Royal Free, uh, but since deployment I've been working at the Nightingale uh, on something called the Lines Team. Okay. Um, so patients in intensive care have to have central lines and arterial lines, mm. um, which will en enable sort of drugs to be administered quickly and for blood samples to be taken. Yeah. Um, I've been helping out putting in those lines and that sort of thing. Awesome. Um, and yeah, when, when that's not busy, sort of helping out with the nursing side of things and just doing what I can to, to help out, really. So Nightingale Hospital, that's obviously been the news quite a lot recently. What, what's it like there for you? Um, it, it's very different uh, to your conventional uh, intensive care setup in that it was previously a, a conference centre and it's obviously been rapidly turned into a hospital. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good setup. Um, we've got sort of excellent staff, um, excellent facilities. Um, they've done a really good job in putting it together. Um, and yeah, yeah it's, it's positive on the whole, I think. Yeah. Well, you're very brave working there. And um, what's, um, what sort of challenges do you face doing that job? Um, i say probably one of the biggest challenges is working in the PPE. Um, mm. So you've got your, your face mask on, you've got your visor. Um, so communication can be quite tough. Yeah. at times and obviously gets gets pretty warm um so that's obviously that's a challenge in itself and then i've not worked in intensive care before um so that's that's a new challenge um but yeah we've had really good training um and sort of shadowed various members of staff who are quite experienced um and that sort of brought me up to speed quite quickly awesome and um obviously the season the hockey season got cut short are you missing hockey Yes, yeah, I am. Um, really, really missing sort of seeing the boys and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, what can you do? Mm. How are you like trying to stay fit, like with your job, and uh, how are you trying to balance that all out? Um, so on my days off, which I'm on currently, um, I sort of go on go on runs and cycles, um, and then I've been doing a, a fair amount of sort of like home workouts uh, with the equipment that. I've managed to get hold of and uh, our strength and conditioning team have sent over a really good uh, set of sort of like body weight workouts so just yeah. being getting through those really and doing a bit in the, the hotel room when I can find a bit of time. Nice. Do you find it hard like not working out as a team just on your own? Um, yeah yeah to be honest it's, it's not the best it can be difficult to uh, sort of motivate yourself sometimes but uh, yeah getting it done. Yeah, and um, obviously every Thursday night the um, whole country comes together at eight o'clock to do all the applauding outside the houses. How much yeah. of a morale boost is that for you and people like yourself on the front line? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I've not actually I've not actually seen one um, on my street because I'm in a hotel on Thursday nights um, before shift. But we we do the clapping as well inside the hospital. Mm. Um, it's, yeah, it's great. It's great to know that the, the country's behind you and uh, everyone's sort of sending really kind messages. And, and yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great motivation in itself. Yeah. And with obviously life in lockdown, no, no sport on, no hockey on, how are you keeping yourself entertained? Any series on Netflix or PlayStation or anything? Yeah, yeah. so I, I've absolutely ploughed through Netflix. Um, I think I've been watching... This week, the the last dance. So it's the uh, a basketball series that's just come out. That's really good. Um, I've been through near enough every sort of sport related documentary on Netflix. Sunderland till I die. That's yeah. a good one. Nice. What advice would you give to anyone who's in this situation during lockdown, whether they're an athlete themselves or just a regular person? Um, I think probably the thing that's helped me most is uh, is keeping in contact with people and uh, having these kinds of chats over. Zoom or FaceTime and that sort of thing. I think it's important to to speak to people and everyone's going through the same thing. 
uh, everyone's sort of facing the same problem. So I, I do think it really helps to to sort of talk about it. Um, and obviously, like you can go out and exercise. And again, I think that's uh, that's been really helpful. So you can just get out of your flat for, for sort of half an hour a day. It's not ideal, but it, it's certainly better than being locked up 24-7. So, yeah, just doing what you can, keep in contact with people and, and get some exercise in. Yeah. And these are very strange times. Did you ever expect to be in a situation like this? No, <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I, I never expected things to to get as they are. Um, obviously, we saw it coming from China, Italy, Spain, and it, it was sort of, it, it did arrive in the UK. I didn't think it was going to get this bad. Um, but yeah, we're here now. I think we're, we're handling it as, as well as can be expected. Um, yeah. Looking forward to, to returning to normal.